What I'm going to be doing today is talking about, and you know, my name is Jim Alt, and welcome to Saturday afternoon or evening, depending on your time zone. And my topic today is UDP networking, and it's going to be an introduction mostly to how it's constructed and how you would start getting scripts put together so that you could figure out how to move forward. I'm also going to tell a couple stories about my experience over the last five years putting together some very fast, very robust UDP networks so you can understand that the goal is worth it if you really need to use UDP. So I'm going to try to watch the chat a little bit, but I have to warn you that because the way UDP works and the way I have to describe it, I don't want to be answering too many questions because we could be here for three or four hours just going off on different tangents. So I want to try and focus this particular demo on some of the crucial pieces, move through it, and then answer questions afterward if that makes sense. So I'm going to switch over now to the screencast. And I'm going to... Now, I know this is a little bit small for everyone to read, but what I'm doing at the moment is just giving you an introduction to where you could go for some good information about TCP and UDP port numbers. What we're doing is talking about two protocols that are used constantly on your computer all the time. Most every web server uses TCP protocol. And Many, many, many other programs use TCP to communicate over the internet from your computer, through your router, through your cable system or your dial-up modem. And UDP is one of the two protocols. It's used more often than you think. The reason I'm talking about UDP today is because it's got some advantages, and I've used it successfully, and so I want to clarify with some example stacks how UDP can be set up and work for you. The starting point I wanted to go for today is a list of TCP and UDP port numbers on Wikipedia. And what we're going to do by coming up with our custom events is use UDP port numbers that don't conflict with those that are reserved by the big boys out there, the big programs. Now, if you go to this page and you start scrolling down, you're going to see lots and lots and lots and lots of port numbers. And I'm not going to jump down through all of these and keep showing you all of them, but you'll recognize quite a few of them as being these great programs that are out there. And you'll be you know, rewarded in finding a few of these things that give you confidence that when you use UDP, you'll find a lot of good people out there that have been using it for a long time. One company that uses UDP is Vonage. And what I'm going to do for this moment is just put up another screen, a little window, and what is a summary of what we've just been looking at. The well known ports are from 0 to 1023. And those are ones you probably shouldn't use. If you're going to choose a port number, just try not to pick those because they're probably in use somewhere. And you can see FTP, you can see the Hypertext Transfer Protocol port number 80 is um, what most web servers use. And if I move down further, there's a thing called registered ports. And these are from 1024 up to 4,000, I'm sorry, 49,151. Now these are ports that are requested to be reserved for a particular use but most of them are either official or unofficial and you only have to worry about them if you're using that particular software on your computer. Most of us don't do that. We don't have a web DAV server. We don't have Minecraft. We aren't using these special ones. So if we happen to pick that port number, everything will be just fine. What the operating system will do, and you can do this as well, is choose port numbers above 49,000 all the way up to 65,535. 